It starts out with Rain Stroud getting called out to a meeting with his party members. All the members look down at him in disgust. He looks around asking why they look so angry at him. Arius tells Rain that he's fired from the hero's party with this shocking Rain. Rain demands to at least know the reason as to why he's out the party. Lene harshly says that it's done because he's useless. After this, the other members start to openly mock him. Rain realizes that they must have always felt this way about him. He just now is here in person to hear it. And when he tries to raise his hand to talk, Arios tells him not to get any rash ideas, to not have them lose any more respect for him, calling him pathetic. As he's leaving, Arius tells him to leave all his equipment and gear that he's earned in the hero's party. Rain leaves the party, along with returning all his gear, with them laughing at him. As he's sitting there on the bench, he starts to think about what he should be doing, with him now in the city of Horizon. While he's there thinking, some children run by, asking him if he's just completed one of his missions with the hero or not. Then they ask for him to do the usual thing, and Rain happily accepts it. Rain sees an eagle flying by and makes a temporary contract with it. He orders the eagle to say hello to the children, which makes the children very happy. Afterwards, he lets the eagle go. The children tell Rain that they plan to become beast tamers just like him. But this shocking him, seeing how when he first met them, they all wanted to be heroes. But now they would rather become beast tamers than a hero. When Rain inquires as to why, they say it's because the other party members always look so annoyed when they're talking to the commoners. And then they would go off to the big parties and just suck up to the rich people. But Rain is different and always plays with them. Hearing this makes him remember the other people in the town being annoyed with them unwilling to be helpful whenever he talks about the hero's party. With Rain always being the one sent out to get supplies. After thinking for a while, he decides to become an adventurer. At the Adventurer's Guild, Rain gives his name for registration as an adventurer. He asks the guild receptionist, Natalie Broad, to tell him about the adventure system. Natalie loves his earnestness and wanting to learn more. So she gives him the essential knowledge, with most adventurers not wanting to learn as much as him. Natalie then asks for his class. Upon hearing that he's a beast tamer as his class, she becomes anxious, worried if he'll be able to finish a job on his own, since normal beast tamers can only have one contract at a time. This makes Rain remember what Lene said to him about him being useless, but Rain says he'll be fine. He was then told to kill 10 goblins as a registration test. Using a squirrel, he tracks down the goblins and then starts attacking them. He kills them off and collects their magical stones. He then hears the faint sound of someone screaming, only to find out that a girl is being cornered by a killer tiger. He decides to act, using his knife to attack it, but the tiger's skin is so hard that his knife breaks. As the killer tiger corners him, he witnessed the girl jump very high into the air and slam the tiger. Rain sees that the girl is from the cat tribe, said to be an endangered species. But there's another legend behind her people. In this world live species stronger than all others, known as the ultimate species, with cat girls being the rarest. The girl falls from exhaustion, and Rain asks whether she is okay or not, with her replying that she's hungry. After Rain gives her some food, she thanks him and introduces herself as Kanade. While they're walking, the two start to talk and get to know each other. Rain tells her about him being eliminated from the hero's party, with this being something they hasn't told anyone, but it's still hurting. But still with feeling this, he's openly telling Kanade. Kanade is angry with the hero and his party, asking how can they do that to a friend? This made Rain happy, as she got angry for him. He pats her on the head and tells her thank you, with this making her happy. She then compliments his taming ability, with him potentially being powerful enough to tame her. This throws Rain off, asking what does she mean by this? Kanade asks Rain to tame her. At first, Rain wonders if it's even possible to do so, but then feels that he wants to be closer to Kanade, so he'll give it a try. He performs the ritual, asking for her name, and when she replies with Kanade, the ritual is successful. And she now has a magical red circle on her hand, meaning that their bond is set. She takes his hand and the two of them start their new journey together. At the Adventurer's Guild, Rain submits his items that he's gained from the quest to the guild receptionist, Natalie. She informs that he's passed his adventurous trial. With that out of the way, he's now recognized as an F-Ring adventurer, and he's given 50 copper coins for completing the quest. Natalie also states that although the payout might be partially small, once Rain completes more quests, he'd rank up and earn more money for his trouble. With the ranking up on his mind, Rain knows that he's gonna need to get some permanent lodging, and to achieve this, he would need to earn some more money. Later, Rain meets up with Kanade in the cafeteria, where he informs that he's now an official member of the Adventurer's Guild, and he asks if she would like to accept the quest. As Kanade is happily accepting the quest, a man approaches the two of them and takes an immediate interest in Kanade, doing so because she's a cat spirit. The man sounds like he has hot breath and is giving off creepy vibes. The man tries to court Kanade, but she refuses him, claiming that she already belongs to Rain since he's already tamed her. With everyone in the guild finding it hard to believe, as cat spirits are one of the ultimate species, the man challenges Rain to an arm wrestling contest with Kanade as the prize. Despite his hesitancy, Rain accepts the challenge to defend her honor. Rain instantly wins the competition, bashing his hand against the table. 
Much to his surprise, just then, Natalie arrives to see what the commotion is about. With her seeing the man on the floor, when the man grabs her uniform, she swiftly smacks him with the same table. Afterwards, Natalie apologizes to Rain and knows that the guild has already been aware of this man's antics and already considers suspending his license. However, her inner voice leaks out when she asks Rain how he managed to tame a cat spirit, with the girl being slightly jealous since it hasn't even been a day yet and he already has a girlfriend. This makes both Rain and Kanade shudder in fear, and Natalie regains her composure and takes the man away. Once Natalie's out of the picture, Rain wonders, how did he become so strong? With this making Kanade explain that once he made a contract with her, as a result, his strength was thereby amplified. Rain's strength is believed to be as strong as Kanade, and Rain is a bit surprised by this since no one back in his village has experienced this. Excited to do a new job, Kanade's hopes are extinguished when all they do is herb gathering again. Kanade complains that they should be doing some more dangerous jobs, like beating up bad guys, saving princesses, or grinding a dungeon. However, Rain explains that that's because he's an F rank. They're only allowed to complete basic jobs. Even when hearing this, she's psyched to do her best so that they can gain more experience and rank up faster. Rain forms a temporary contract with some horned rabbits to collect their quota of herbs, with the rabbits rubbing it in that they've completed her quest for her. In the distance, Kanade hears some screaming, and Rain suggests that they go check it out. At the location, an old man and his mule are surrounded by a group of bandits known as the Ebon Fangs. Hiding behind a nearby bush, Kanade informs Rain of the Ebon Fangs' infamous reputation. Although Kanade believes that they should fall back and get some help, Rain refuses to do so, and thinks that they should take on the bandits themselves. Kanade likes her master's gumption, and they go in to rescue the old man. As Rain is taking on the bandits by himself, Kanade checks on the old man, while also doing her inner monologue noting how worried she was about Rain. Given his nature, she didn't know if he would actually be able to fight, or how he would be able to handle this newfound strength, worried that it would affect his mind or his spirit. However, as Kanade observes Rain fighting the bandits, her heart starts to race, and when he's finished, Rain notices that Kanade's face is a little bit reddish, and believes that she was hurt. Kanade, however, denies this. The old man thanks him for their help, with them also explaining that a group of adventurers were supposed to be protecting him. However, they fled when the bandits arrived, and then he voices his concern about the Evan Fangs, with them being known to get revenge. Briefly contemplating over it, Rain decides to deal with the bandits himself, much to Kanade's dismay. En route to their destination, Rain typically makes a contract with some animals around the surrounding area to do some scouting of the Evan Fangs. He also explains to Kanade his reason for wanting to deal with the Evan Fangs himself, and soon they reach the Evan Fangs hideout and Kanade is dejected that a temporary contracted animal has done more than she has, but they're mad that someone else beat her to the punch. Rain then apologizes to her, with his helping her regain her composure. Rain starts the details and plans, with it hinging on him having a temporary contract with the RBs, who have a special ability of paralyzing people for over 12 hours. She's astonished that Rain could tame such an insect, despite being a beast tamer. He tells Kanade that back in his home village, he learned the basics of beast taming and a subclass of insect taming. As astonished as Kanade was, she's ordered to return back to the town to get some reinforcements while he's dealing with the Evan Fangs while using the RBs. Although Kanade felt dejected again, with her not being used at Rain's familiar, the reinforcements that Rain wanted were called the Order of the Knights, a group of knights that are tasked by the government to uphold peace in the land. Understanding her task, Kanade leaves and swarms of RBs arrive, and Rain forms temporary contracts with all of them. Elsewhere, two of the three adventurers who are tasked with protecting the old man are revealed to be Rain's old comrades, Mina and Lene. Two of them curse their situation, how Arius and Agatha are all sucking up to some nobles while they're forced to do an adventurous job. Afterwards, to redirect their frustration at the beast tamer that he hired, opting their dismay in his inadequacy as a beast tamer, Lene posted him in the front, asking why he couldn't do a proper job defending them, with this confusing the beast tamer, since his entire job is meant to be support. If anything, he should never be in the front. They're then mad that he only brought one animal, with that being a squirrel to being a lookout, with this making him even more confused. The beast tamer claims that the demands of the two of them were too complex for him to accomplish. He claims that the notion of a beast tamer taming more than 20 animals is impossible, with him explaining that if he tried to tame more than one beast, he would get nerve damage, with most beast tamers doing the same thing. Lene considers this to be a lie, but they're not willing to accept that the beast tamer that they formerly had, being Rain, actually was exceptional. So she begins to threaten him, saying that she has the power to destroy him in one shot. Having hundreds of spells under her arsenal, as well as their healer, being Mina, being able to resurrect the dead. So she makes him accept the full responsibility of this error, and the beast tamer runs away in fear. She internally refuses to believe that Rain is any higher than garbage that she thought him to be. Turning back to Rain's mission, his RBs are dealing with the remaining Ebon Fangs, and Kanade arrives with the reinforcements. As the reinforcements are handling the paralyzed bandits, Rain notices that only the adventurers are here, and not a single member of the Knights of Order come to their aid. One of the adventurers mentions that the Knights of the Order had no time to deal with a bunch of bandits. 
At that moment, some king lizards break out of their cages, with the Ebon Fang members mentioning that they keep him around for special occasions, and as he says this, he's being attacked by his own king lizard. Through the combined efforts of Rain and Kanade, they manage to take down all the monsters, allowing the adventurers and the Ebon Fang members to escape the area. Eventually, Rain and Kanade escape the Ebon Fang's base, with Kanade holding onto the King Lizard's magical stones, and they're being praised for their accomplishments, as they just now defeated a C-rank monster. The praises sit well with Rain, with him recalling being kicked out of Ario's party, and never receiving thanks for his aid, with him being so thankful that he now has Kanade. This is where we're going to leave off in today's video. If you like today's video, here's another one just like it, so go check it out. I'll be breaking down this anime into multiple parts. Now if you liked the video, make sure to leave it a like, and why not subscribe to the channel? I upload daily videos just like this one, so I'll see you next time.